Jason Lee Podcast. Welcome back to all new episode of the Jason Lee Podcast. Baby, 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 what a week it has been. Actually, two weeks because we weren't here last week. It's been such a crazy week, we didn't even realize that we weren't here last week. Why? <laughs> because I'm running for Stockton City Council. And we are six days away from the election. I don't know, by the time this drops, to see, it'll be four days away from the election, which means it's just right around the corner before I step into a new level of responsibility. And I have to say, I've been very, 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 very excited about the idea of being able to lead for my city. As you all know, I'm from Stockton, California. If you've been following me, I've been talking a lot about the work that we've been doing. I am so tired. That tired is an understatement <laughs> because um, I'm exhausted. Funny story, and this is true, a friend of mine, I was in Miami recently uh, checking on our other business, Hollywood uh, Healthcare Unlocked, and I had a couple days off, but I was so exhausted the day I got there that I fell asleep before my friend flew in. And when my friend flew in and called me, I woke up and said, are you in Stockton? Because <laughs> I thought he had landed in Stockton. That is how tired I, did you, am I lying? No. I was so exhausted, and then he was like, no. I go, are you in LA? No, they were in Miami. I was in Miami. There was a time in Stockton I woke up and I was in the dark and thought I was in Miami. Oh. So uh, I'm I'm really trying to figure things out, uh, <laughs> but I am managing. And what I'm looking forward to managing is all the responsibility that comes ahead. We recently did Coffee With Your Candidate. Let me just walk you through the things that we've done on this campaign because we have really ran the hell out this camp. I'm gonna give a round of applause to everybody on the team. Because baby, when I say grassroots, this is the grass that a lot of you snakes are living in right <laughs> now. We have been in these streets. We've done precinct walking, phone banking. We've done mailers. We've done coffee with your candidates. Last night we did tacos and tamas. I don't know what that means, but si se puede, everybody showed up. We've had uh, forums. I've done debating. We've done stickers that say, I voted for Jason Lee. We have done it all. What else have we done? I'm trying to think. I mean, we've done social media. We've done emailing. We have done text blasting. I've given out business cards with my number on it. We have done it all. And I'm going to tell you why. We did it because it's important that when you're allowing somebody to earn your trust and earn your vote, that they show you how hard they want to earn it and that they show you the commitment that they're going to be able to work that hard for you once they get it. And I think that just in that alone, we've done a, a really good job. We've also had the nonprofit there, Hollywood Cares and the I'm Ready Initiative. We've given out Toys for, toy, toys for Joy. Uh, we're planning our I Am Ready for School giveaway. And we've done workshops and a lot of things in the community and preparing for Stockton's Got Talent, which is a talent show where young people are going to have an opportunity to uh, compete for $5,000 in a post on Hollywood Unlocked. So I'm really excited about all the work that's been done. And I truly believe we only have to get 50% plus one. We're going to get it. Uh, what have you? What does it look like on the outside watching all of the work that we're doing in Stockton? I was gonna say uh, one of the other things that I think you've you all have done that you didn't mention is really wake up people in the community to politics and how they can become more active in like changing the trajectory of their 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 life in their community. And you can see it from the outside. You can see the engagement, even on posts like when some of the other candidates try and attack you on social media, you can see the community starting to like get into those posts and speak about, no, they wanna talk about their community. They don't wanna talk about like your love life or what you do for work. They wanna talk about change coming to their community and they actually see that through the work you guys have been doing there. Rob, so. what love life? <laughs> I don't have a love life. You know, who the days where I, and there were days where I had a love life one level or two. Uh, yeah, there were the days when I had one, but I don't even have half the life, a fraction of the life that I used to have. But you know, what Rob is talking about, one of the opponents was online talking about I dated a crib. You know I crack jokes here at the show and I tell a story. And you know, they wanted to bring up my dating life. They found pictures of people that I've made out with in the past. They've talked about the show, the content here. The thing I love about my community is that I am them and they, they are me. And anybody who's seen me that's from Stockton that has been following my story, even those of you who are in Africa talking about you want to vote for me, you can't. <laughs> but if you've been following my story, you know I came from dirt, nothing, just dirt, mm -hmm. just from the gutter. And so to be able to be where I am, yeah, there's lots of people who are inspired by that story, regardless of all the, the mist around the content that I put out. <laughs> you were there. What you think? I feel like an election, a campaign is kind of like dating, right? Like speed dating. Like if I'm seeing somebody who's putting a lot of 
participation, a lot of effort into me. I'm going to give back to vote for them. You've been pulling up. We went to Sikh Temple. You went to church. You pulled up to the Zumba restaurant. Zumba with my Filipino homies. What's up, Mama Zumba Cora? Zumba with the Filipinas. <laughs> like, you really pull up, and then they reciprocate, and they all pull up to you. There was, yeah. like, 100 people waiting for you to talk to you upstairs in your office yesterday in yeah. Stockton. Like, it's really cool to see it, and I feel like everyone sees your active participation, so they're like, oh. Like, he's yeah. really serious. Yeah. Yeah. And sure. the and the, the greatest part about it all too is uh to know me in my personal life, I am not this accessible to people. I don't like being around people who are just being around. You know, we recently had a dinner at somebody's house, I'm not gonna say no name. <laughs> And, and I told them, like, I don't even do this. I don't socialize like that. Me and Rob, we hang out. We can hang out everywhere from the Abbey to Palace <laughs> and everywhere in between, mm -hmm. you know. But I don't go to people's homes, you know, and I don't socialize and hang out because the minute I feel like I'm in the midst of mediocrity, I lose my mind, you know, <laughs> because we don't have time to waste. And that's the thing about this campaign. I'm telling people in Stockton, like, you deserve better. And people that don't travel outside their neighborhood or their city to really see what what's out there don't understand how they're being robbed of those opportunities. And so I'm excited about that. And I love the fact that we've been able to structure the Hollywood Unlocked Jason Lee world uh, in a way that works for everybody. Now I want to show you the office in Stockton because I'm really, really proud. I have to say shout out to... <sighs> go Rob, go Rob. I'm not going to say his name. Go Rob. <laughs> uh, yeah. Until the people came in the office and put their dirty feet on my couch yesterday that oh, hasn't God. been scotch guarded. But, you know, Rob, shout out to Rob, Andrew, and shout out to Alex, who have done a phenomenal job. I gave the team three weeks to pull that office together. I don't know how they did it. I don't know. And this is people who are Rob's in Miami, Andrew's in L.A. and Stockton. And, and I mean, they and did it. And you were in the air talking. And about I was in the air <laughs> sending camera shots from the security cameras <laughs> of how to place photos. <laughs> yes, because I micromanage. But, you know, shout out to you guys. The office is phenomenal and I love when I walk in and shut the door I'm in my world mm -hmm. and I feel very comfortable because part of how I operate is on my feelings meaning my emotional stability and I have to be in my space and I feel really really good but are you proud of how it turned out oh yeah 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 I mean I, I know like we always create a vision for what you want Hollywood Unlocked to look and feel like and to be able to do it like on a physical level for it, like interior spaces is great. So I like, I enjoy that. So yeah. it's fun. And doing it for Miami was quite a challenge though. Like but doing it for, and I have to tell you, and I know for those of you out there saying, oh, well, you're bougie, you have, yes, we have a Miami condo and it is lovely. <laughs> and we enjoy being there. It is a really comfortable space. The way we design that, well, let me first show you, first, here's what the stock novice looks like. Take a look. and just watching it deteriorate where it was like, okay, I can only take my kids between like eight and noon. At one point I talked to an officer and he was like, yeah, you know, like seven guys on duty right now. For the whole city. It was at yeah. night time, right? Yeah, but that was it, city. yeah. Here's 30 officers. Yeah. There's a shooting right here. Here's 10. Yeah. There's a robbery over here. Here's five. Right. What, what's, who's here? So right. many yeah. come. I think that the city's done a bad job of, of identifying and investing in black and brown nonprofits. I have a grandson that's 31 and he's uh, intellectually disabled. Okay. That we work for a nonprofit for, for the, that particular population. We're the disparity in the whole regional center system in yeah. California. Well, we're, we're eight days away. I feel really good about it. I mean, of course, you know, anything we can do to earn more votes if you have friends, family. Yeah, so as you see, everything, it's, it's, it's our world. Now, with the Miami condo, what I love about that space is we used to go to Miami all the time as we were setting up the business. Healthcare Unlocked, as you know, we have the Healthcare Unlocked uh, part of Hollywood Unlocked, which I'm getting ready to. Baby, when I tell you, I'm about to go full steam ahead on that, so be ready. Um, 
uh, we were going to the one hotel and we were constantly staying at the one hotel and we just loved it. We loved the decor. We loved how it smelled. We loved everything about it. And so I told Rob one day, I said, hey, just design it like the one hotel. It literally looks like the one hotel now. <laughs> yeah. And it's right on the beach. And so we have a lot of fun there, but I've only been there once in the last month because I, I, I'm in Stockton now. The whole conversation in Stockton right now from the people that I'm running against is, he don't really live here. They really don't understand that I have a house there and uh, and we are we are in the community now. We got the office. Now we got the house. So I think they're 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 struggling with two things. Why do you make it and get all this money and come back? Cause you should. Mm -hmm. And then is he really really? Oh, he really is there. He got a business every day. Oh, he got the Hollywood and Log up there. Yeah, I'm really back. And yesterday was such a special moment. I had a special moment with a guy. I think his name is Seuss. He has a podcast. Uh, not the little podcast, the big podcast. And he wanted to interview me, and we did an interview. And in the interview, he he said to me, "You know, do you think you're qualified to do this job? You know, people are saying you're not qualified." And I looked him dead in his eye, and I said, "Cause you know, I got my wallpaper." I said, "Do you know who I am? I'm the fucking goat of this. What you're trying to do." And there's people that are gonna watch this interview and say, "Who are you? You're not qualified to interview me." Cause I get interviewed by the Charlemagnes and the Wendy's and the Vlad. Noriegas and the Vlads and the, who are you? But the thing about the exchange of platforming and the exchange of energy and the exchange of wanting to see us as a culture move forward is we have to pull each other up and we have to be able to step out on faith and try to do our best. And that's what I plan to do. But they also don't realize I've had a lot of years experience in the union. So I, I know uh, I feel good about it. Four more days from when this airs, six more days from today. And uh, I'll be the Stockton City Council member for District <laughs> 6. Are you excited? Yeah. What? Yeah. I feel like this is like your graduation now. Fine. You won't <laughs> well, get your diploma. It's just listen, I got my proud GED somewhere. I, somebody told me I should frame that and hang it. I think you yeah. should. I think a GED? Should. Yes, I think a you should hang it in the office. Yeah. But how do you find a GED? I threw it away when I got it. I think you the, can call for another yeah, yeah, you can call. Wherever you find it. Okay. Because <laughs> Marina tracks down stuff. So, like, if you can. Uh, you know, recently we had DDG on the show. And Marina, she said, oh, he's a boxer. We should get some signed gloves from, from some from Floyd. So, I ain't going to lie. We went over there to good old eBay to find some signed gloves for Floyd. And we ordered them. But she went a step further and got him an actual pair of signed gloves from the champ. Because, you know, we kind of know him. And uh, it was funny because there was a moment in the show where he doubted that they were real, and this is what happened. Take a look. We don't even give Gibbs this early in the show, but I'm gonna see if he disrespects the champ. No, nah, hell no. Nah. Okay. Wait, he signed this? Yeah, he signed this. Floyd, that's my best he friend. Ain't lying. He ain't signed this. It said, what does it say? Turn it up, turn it up. Turn, yeah, you can take them off. We put it in the case so it doesn't fall out, but. That's cap, that ain't signed that. You got a picture of him signing it? Where's my phone? Hold on a second, stop playing. If you've seen this show, you already know now. This is him tricking me into calling Floyd Mayweather. Why do people question me? I only got <laughs> one job to do. Champ, can you please, I'm in, the mid, I'm in the middle of an interview with DDG. Can you please tell him that you signed these gloves for him as a gift? Why wouldn't I sign you? You know that. I have no reason to lie to him. You don't need gloves, especially for you. Appreciate it, bro. Give it up for Floyd Mayweather. Woo! That's funny. That's dope. Man. Okay. So, so now That's you fine. don't believe that? No, it's I like, believe. I believe. I appreciate it. Okay, of course. That was a moment, mm -hmm. and people love it. And mm -hmm. Floyd uh, loved it. And that was good. But anyway, DDG has become one of my favorite people. So shout out to him and Hallie. Uh, give us a picture of the baby. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood Unlocked is on its way to new levels as we're now in the process of developing our Impact Award show. And I posted something on social media the other day where I said, I'm going to be stepping down as CEO of Hollywood Unlocked. And baby, y'all are all over social media as if I have lost my job, quit my job. <laughs> it's the end of Hollywood Unlocked. No, it's actually the beginning of a new era. Uh, I am stepping into more responsibility. I am stepping into more opportunity with my nonprofit and really am going to be working with Rob to lead on Healthcare Unlocked and our partnership with Enhanced Health. That is our major initiative for the next year and a couple years to come of really getting California and more Americans healthier. Um, and because that requires such focus and it aligns with where I'm going 
in Stockton, in California, being one of the first states in the country where undocumented uh, people and their families can be eligible for health care and us being able to plant the flag in California is a privilege that I need somebody to really focus on the details of Hollywood Unlocked on a day to day basis. So although I'll be stepping away as the CEO, you know, it may be a co CEO position. It may be because I'm still going to be in an Instagram and all on social media because I am very much behind the scenes in the wiring of Hollywood Unlocked. But if you thought I was on my way out now, nah, it just means that you're not going to call me about what's going on every day. Did you people thought I was gonna quit? I think yeah. they thought you were gonna quit. That was weird. <laughs> I thought you were gonna quit. No, you didn't. You did not think that. This weekend. Well, that was a different quit. <laughs> but I did uh it's funny because when Rihanna and I were talking, remember when she stepped down as CEO of Fenty, everybody mm -hmm. thought she lost her job. You can't lose something you created. <laughs> You know, okay. she stepped in as chairwoman, chairwoman. So she's like the top, top dog. Chairman is the first, the top. So right now I'm founder and CEO. I'm just going to be founder and maybe CEO, co-CEO. I don't know, but uh, I won't be running the day-to-day -day stuff. So we can focus on what we need to do. All right. Anything else we need to get into before we jump into the stuff that you all showed up for? I think that's it. It's time for Tea with Jason Lee. I don't know what is going on in the world. I remember back in the day when they used to have Girls Gone Wild. Now it's football players and comedians gone wild. Well, Cam Newton, I'm not a friend of his show because I got sick one time and then I canceled twice on going on the show. I'm going to go on the show because Cam Newton, I'm a fan. You all know he's wild and he has his own way of doing his thing. He has a, a, a podcast that's doing really well. Well, the former NFL player was caught on camera fighting at a seven-on-seven -seven football game in Atlanta. Now, of course, I've learned being back in Stockton with Edison and Western Ranch High Schools that seven-on-seven -seven is the kids, right? Mm -hmm. Well, kids ain't kids like they used to be. The NFL MVP was embroiled in a whole brawl with several men uh, from Top Shelf Performance, a football organization that, like Cam, had teams playing in the 7-7, seven, 7-7 seven, seven versus 7 tournament. Now, at first, it was unclear as to what led to the fight, but it began under a pop-up tent that spilled over to a fence where Cam was seen not letting go of someone as people tried to break up the fight. I have to tell you, at first I thought this was a joke because somebody had texted to me while I was in my campaign trail moment, you know, knocking on doors. But when I looked at it, I couldn't believe what I saw. But of course, I also can't wait to show you. Take a look. <laughs> Now, that's not what jumping looked like when I grew up. Jumping when I grew up, you got the hell beat out of you. You had blood, a broken leg, maybe an arm was dislocated. You basically tried to jump him and he hung with all of you. I felt like, one, you know, jumping is such bitch made sport that I don't understand why it took six or seven of y'all. Maybe y'all thought it was, I thought it was a seven versus seven. It was seven versus one in that fight uh, that you all felt that you needed to jump Cam Newton. So I have different observations. Yes, we've already seen the Breakfast Club talked about the fact that Cam's hat never fell off during the fight, which is great. Oh yeah, he had a good hat, right? But that's not the observation that I saw. I saw these people try to take down an MVP and he stood on his feet and never lost footing. And I don't even know how old he is. He looks great for whatever age he is. He's a new father. Him and uh, Watch Jazzy just had their baby. But, you know, he he's old enough to where he shouldn't be scrapping with these young people, but he was not too old because he stood on his feet. And, again, I think that, like, whatever led to the fight, it didn't make sense to see you all try to attack an MVP the way that you did. But, Cam, you also didn't have security with you. And I have to tell you, now that I'm a politician... I'm taking my secret service 
very public. And I let you see the security around me. I have had security with me the entire way I've moved, not because I'm running for office, but because of who I am. You are a celebrity. You are rich. You are an athlete. You are a public figure. People know who you are. So why would you not have the protection around you, regardless of who you are, how tough you are, when you know that this could happen? And you're a new father. And the way people operate now, you could have died. Somebody could have shot you or stabbed you or something really bad could have happened. Thank God, let's knock on wood that it didn't. But something bad could have happened. And, you know, that was something that we've all watched play out. And now it's been a viral moment. When you saw this, what did you think? I mean, it was kind of wild. Right? He threw them like dolls across <laughs> the damn field. And it, it was him standing and fighting them off more than the actual security was for me. So to me, he has his own security. But I'm like, I hate social media because I saw a lot of hate towards Cam for that. But you don't know what was said or what. I don't know. I could, I don't know. I, it was just silly, all these grown men fighting in the presence of these kids. Like, that was the thing that was problematic for me. I'm like, come on, you guys are the coaches for these teams. And now y'all are beating each other up. Like, let's do better. And we're living in a world of cloud chase. We're now with social media and things that can go viral. Now these people are some uh, newfound stars because they're even releasing statements. After going viral, mm -hmm. Top Shelf Performance issued an apology to everyone affected. And one of the coaches, TJ Brown, who we never would have talked about unless he jumped <laughs> on this guy, shared his message. And this is what he said. On behalf of Top Shelf Performance, we would like to completely apologize for our actions earlier and getting beyond our character. We are deeply concerned about the recent incident involving Cam Newton and our thoughts are with all per parties affected. Violence has no place in our community and we strongly condemn any form of aggression. At Top Shelf Performance, we are committed to fostering a safe and inclusive environment for everyone associated with our organization. Our values are centered around respect and collaboration and making sure every kid and player thrives to be better, that's around us. We take any deviation from these principles seriously. We are actively addressing this matter internally and working towards a resolution that aligns with our commitment to creating a positive space for our team and clients. We appreciate your understanding and want to reassure our community that something like this will never happen again. We remain dedicated to upholding the highest standards of professionalism and integrity and will continue to help and grow with the players in the community. Cap. You're funded by somebody white who saw y'all out there acting a damn fool, and now money ain't coming to daddy. That's when y'all start releasing this because anybody who holds those core values close to their heart, like we do at Hollywood Unlocked, we don't be out here fighting and we fight, we do going through all types of stuff every day. It's because we hold ourselves to a certain standard. You, in the midst of cancel culture, look a, a plum fool out there fighting an MVP who's out there probably bringing more attention to your struggling ass under top performing company. And here you are now trying to get us to buy into the bullshit. No, what you did was an embarrassment and it was us out there acting a fool you know it's one thing if there were these group of white men jumping on cam and then we had to you know make it a race thing but this is where they go back to saying black on black crime and we know black on black crime ain't even a real thing so i don't understand why you all would behave the way that you do put on the circus paint and then act like we don't see you under the tent uh, you should be embarrassed and cam newton if you have any way of suing these people you probably won't get two nickels to rub together so don't even waste your time by the way, your grammar in that apology was so all over the place. Don't capitalize every other letter and every other first letter of every other word. Did a two-year-old write that? All right. Um, are we over them? Are we over this? Yeah. No. Because later, TJ and another coach, Steph Brown, spoke with the Beat Atlanta. Of course they went out getting clout. That's what I'm saying. I know what it is. They went and talked to the Beat. Now, they ain't never been beat even though they got beat at their own game right there that we just saw. And they explained how it all began. Because, of course, after you issued apology, what do you do? You go explain it all over again. <sighs> Where's Wendy Williams? We're going to get to that later. We needed Wendy to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Okay, well... Anyway, they're blaming it on a cam. They're blaming all this on Cam, saying that he talked shit for days leading up to the brawl, you know, and that it finally caught up with him. Well, here's a video of them talking about it. Take a look. I want to know, like, what transpired? Like, what can make 
someone, anyone, like, so angry because I'm sitting here and I'm speaking to you guys and there's so much that you guys are doing for the community and you're pouring into these uh, young men. And so it's just like, what can make something transpire like this? First and foremost, like, what I want to do, I want to apologize to everybody that was out there and okay. to the, the parents of not just our team, but mm-hmm. everybody. Everybody that was affected like, by that. Yeah. That should have never happened. Mm-hmm. Like, we should have been able to sit down and talk like there's no reason we should be yelling at each other while a game right. going on like it's that shit it ain't none of that necessary and so Keon has an organization mm-hmm. it's not just one team he has an organization so it's just been a lot of trash talk you know from you know what I'm saying hit more so his side just out of nowhere just talking crazy to us for no reason it's like it's not nothing new like I've been around bro for five years so mm-hmm. like this typical Cam Newton behavior. But Steph, you was right there. Yeah, so oh, they you talking. You was listening to the whole thing, so yeah, you heard yeah. him and you walked up. So, Steph see. walk up there. Oh, okay. What's the, and as I'm know? walking up with Steph, Cam is in Steph's face. I made y'all responsible for everything y'all do, whatever. The, then he grabbed Steph. Okay. So me being my little brother and I'm walking up a flight of steps and I see a 6'6 six, six guy grabbing my brother. And that's the footage that everybody That's sees. what everybody's seeing. Okay. Like, so that was the first alter. All right, well, I'm going to call Cap. I'm going to call Cap. First of all, I love that you had the fresh twist to make your hair pop in the video because everybody wants, before they get a red carpet, want to make sure they're red carpet ready. But you guys are in sports and you know what happens in sports. You talk shit. You trash talk. This is why I don't, this is why I go to Palace and deal with the drag queens because at least it's a safer environment. You dragging it now online is just wasting all of our time. When you see this, what, what do you, what do you think? Is this, is this cloud chase? Yeah, I mean they yeah, they 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 screwed up. They started a fight with a celebrity in front of all the kids and now they got to save face. That's in front of the kids. But this is what like this reminds me I feel like a lot of people treat celebrities a type of way and are like, "Oh, you're not going to do anything to me. You're not going to do anything." But I'm here for it. I'm here for Cam standing on business. Just like they were trying to play Cardi with the water bottles and then she just threw well, but listen, we're not going to bring Cardi into this. At the end of the day, look, you, you know, you tried to take the man down. You saw your brother getting handled by a 6'6 dude, and then you got handled. Here's a video of TJ trolling Cam right before the fight. Didn't think we had that receipt? Look. Hey, Joe. Ooh. Hey, Joe. Hey, man, I'm going to say it. They can't hide the film now. You know what I'm saying? That three times. You know what I'm saying? Y'all not throwing that none, throwing that Atlanta hero quarterback. <laughs> Just cannot chill, beat me. Can't be for. Look like they beat you when you try to take him to the ground. And you know what's so funny is, can you play when he went to the radio station and was talking? Just play a little bit of that one more time. Go ahead. I just want to know, like, what transpired? Like, what can make someone, anyone, like, so angry? Because I'm sitting here and I'm speaking to you guys, and there's so much that you guys are doing for the community, and you're pouring into these uh, young men. And so it's just like, what can make something transpire like this? First and foremost, like what I want to do, I want to apologize to everybody that was out there and okay. to the the parents of not just our team, but mm-hmm. everybody, everybody that, was, that was affected like, by it. That, yeah. that, that should have never happened. Mm-hmm. Like we should have been able okay, stop to that. sit down and talk. Now play that video that went viral of him trolling Cam before. Let me see if the tone is the same. Hey, Joe. Ooh. Hey, Joe. Hey, man, I'm going to say it. They can't hide the film now. You know what I'm saying? That three times. You know what I'm saying? Liar. <laughs> Liar, you got caught. See, when the camera was rolling, you knew what it was going to be, you cleaned it up. But when you didn't know what it was going to be, you was acting like a... Can I say it? Yeah. Nigga. (laughs) Period. Right? Ain't that what y'all was thinking? That's Uh, what we all were thinking. I'm still going to be the councilman, but I'm going to come... The councilman going to call it out. You're going to lose your funding. Them kids ain't no kid le- looking at y'all. Your kids are going to walk by you and go like this. <laughs> There's nothing worse than when you know the kids have lost faith in you. Mm-hmm. That's what you. That's what make it worse. When somebody look at you and go, that's bad. Well, when they go, mm, mm, mm. don't it make it worse? All right, Cam, you did a great job. <laughs> Got to give you your flowers, man. Not only did you not get whelps from the whips from those braids, but you actually <laughs> stood on your business and on your feet. Period. See you soon. Peace. <sighs> By the way, I'm never going to quit my day job where I do this because this is... Me and Charlemagne just got off the call. Charlemagne, I, I'm not going to get into all the details, but we just got off the call, and Charlemagne said that um, he can tell 
that I'm struggling from not being an arsonist anymore <laughs> because I would burn the <laughs> internet down. And I think in many ways he's right because I do struggle with saying it like I mean it, but being very meaningful in how I say it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Because I understand the power of my platform now, baby. Gagging, by the way, I am retiring the Gag Nation. We will be having a going out of business, though. The Gag Nation is going away. It's going away. Because I'm not on that. That's just not where I am anymore. But I still love y'all. Y'all still my family. I told some of y'all yesterday on live. But, but yes, I do have a match or two. I just don't have the flamethrower anymore, you know? I don't have the... Um, Anymore. Because that's just not the energy that I'm on, people. Okay? But I'm still going to have to check up when I need to. All right? Cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm getting pains in my back now. <laughs> no, no. Seriously. I mean, no. Like, I'm not even, like. I really am getting like pains in my back. I don't know what it is. I think it's, I think my, I'm just stressed or maybe it's the election or maybe my frame is getting smaller because I'm losing, I don't know what it is. But I like just right now when this picture popped up, I just got a sharp pain in my back. For real. And I'm not even being messy. See, this is the thing. You know what I was thinking the other day when they say Jason spills the tea? You know the tea, you know what tea stands for? Truth. Think about it. Yeah. When you're spilling the tea, you're telling them what's actually happening. My yeah. nose is itching. This is not. I don't know. I got to make it. Come on, Caitlin. Be very clear. I'm up here. Not down here. I'm up here. It don't itch down here. It itches right up here. As a matter of fact, we ain't cutting this out because I don't want no problems. It's a makeup deal issue. Okay. Well, anyway. See? Thank you. I told you I felt something. It wasn't cocaine, right? No, of okay. course not. Never is. I don't do drugs, but they tried to say I was on cocaine years ago. Okay. Well, listen. Who's responsible for this photo? Ariella. Okay, Ariella. <laughs> I'm going to put you. Okay. Put Ariella's Instagram right here below. <laughs> Ariella. Okay. Ariella. <laughs> Ariella. Whatever. She's responsible for this, but this... She reminds this picture, and, and I'm only saying this, and I'm trying not to be rude at all, because I actually am a fan of her. I really am. She's an exciting person on TikTok. This looks like, remember that um, that show back in the day that had the rubber dinosaurs? Oh, my God. Was it a baby? Yeah. The baby. I had the baby. Was it the mom? The, was it? I had the baby. <laughs> Baby Sinclair. Okay, look. Just so y'all know I'm Out not lying. Wait. Just so y'all know I'm not lying. Send that picture. No, that's the baby right there. Send the baby photo to Johnny so he could pop it in. Just send it right now and I'm going to wait. Just the photo. <laughs> Watch. Johnny, pop this in when you get it, okay? Copy. And then do a side by side. Yes. <laughs> you send it to Johnny? Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, it's just called dinosaurs. I'm not going to hell today. No, that was my favorite show <laughs> back when I was a kid. Please, please. Put it back up. Uh. <laughs> you know, so so if you saw this kid and it said, "This is my mother," you wouldn't believe it. Look at the mouth, even the mouth. <laughs> no, it's an uncanny resemblance. It's okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> And I'm not shaming. I'm only saying I get it, right? Well, this woman has gone viral after exposing her alle allegedly fraudulent ex-husband in a 50-part TikTok series called Who the Fuck Did I Marry? Now, her name is Teresa Johnson, but she goes by Ressa Tessa. No. 
Reese Tisa. Reese Tisa. I'm not investing in this that much in this woman's <laughs> life or her back. But we're gonna talk about that too. <laughs> she accused her ex-husband Jerome McCoy, known in Teresa's videos as Legion, of lying about his family wealth career. Well, pretty much his whole entire life since they met. Now, here's photos of Teresa and Jerome without their baby. Can you put that picture back up, John? <laughs> they even got the same eyelids and everything. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Anyway, this is a photo of Teresa and Jerome in 2020. Now, they look really happy. She didn't get her angle right in the first photo, though. Like, you know you're supposed to put it down. She fixed it in the second one. All right. Well, either way, that was them during happier moments, right? Now, in Teresa's 50-part series, it's nearly eight hours long. But here's just a little bit about what happened over there on TikTok. Take a look. All right. Backstory number one. We met in March of 2020. Georgia got shut down, locked down um, two and a half weeks later. We got married January of 2021, and we were divorced August of 2021. So keep in mind that this story is spanning March of 2020 until about April, actually, excuse me, June of 2021, because I kicked him out the house on his birthday. So um, we met online, Facebook dating and Hinge. I will never do online dating again, um, but that is where I met him. My tire blew on 285 just before Boulder Crest um, <laughs> on my way to our first date. Clearly, that was a sign. I didn't listen, but my tire blew, and he met me at a gas station. Um, we were supposed to be meeting at Cheesecake Factory, but because the tire blew, he met me at a gas station, fixed my tire, then took me to go get another tire, paid for it, and I just thought, oh my God, this is the beginning of a beautiful romantic story. Boy, was I wrong. So, things he lied about. Every morning, he would get on the phone with his brother. We'll call his brother John. He would get on the phone with John, and he would be like, hey, babe, um, John said good morning. And I'm in the bathroom doing my hair because I still had to go to work at this time. And so I would just say, hey, John, you know, call out, hey, John. And, you know, he would... He would relay back and forth what I said to John, what John said to me. I never actually talked to John on the phone. Um, and so he would be like, you know, I can't wait for COVID to be over. Me and my girl, we're going to come see y'all. I can't wait for auntie to meet her. Side note, his parents were deceased, are deceased, excuse me. Um, so he was like, I can't wait for you guys to meet her. Like she, I know I'm gonna marry her. I know it. He said everything I wanted to hear. Love bombing 101. This man wrote the book. So he talked to his brother every day. He talked to his friends every day in front of me. Um, he would be on the phone laughing, cutting up, you know, cracking jokes, telling them, hey, she said, hey, you know, um, tell, just having conversation, like a normal conversation. I didn't think anything of it. It wasn't until he got kicked out of my house in June of 2021 that I found out every single phone call was made up he was never on the phone i don't know those of you who are watching you're probably like there's no way listen to what i'm saying everything i'm telling you can be verified every single phone call he ever had um was made up the phone calls where he called to pay his car off made up the phone call to the realtor when we were looking at houses made up the phone call to the bank for them to release the money for the house that he signed his name for made up every phone call was made up his brother every day he and his brother had not spoken since 2015 when his mother died i found that out later on he made up every phone call he had no friends but yet every phone call would be my friend this, my friend that. The second lie, his job. He told me when I first met him out the gate that he was a VP at his company. He had been transferred from California to Georgia and he was in the process of you know getting, getting himself settled. He was looking to buy a house. His job um, was VP of a major condiment company. I won't say the name because I don't want to get sued. Um, but he said that his job was VP at that company. 
It is fair to note he paid every bill. He paid all the bills. He gave me spending money. Like, even though we were quarantined, locked down in my little townhouse, again, this story was always he's looking for, he's, he's trying to buy a house. So when we got together, it was we need to buy a house together. Like, this is forever. We're going to have a family. Let's go ahead and find a house. So the lie was, is that he was a, v he was a VP at his company. Um, and he maintained that lie every day. Truth is, he was a temp. He called me from work all the time. All right, well, listen, um, I know I was cracking jokes about this photo. This is a bad photo. She's actually cute. Uh, but since going viral and being criticized online by millions and millions of people, Jerome is now speaking out because he's supposed to. Now, this is what his PSA were to his fans. Look. Hey, y'all. <laughs> I really think I'm finna delete TikTok. It's just not good for my mental health. All this really took a toll on me. I ain't lie about anything, nor did I ever badmouth any of these females. I'll let karma handle it. Y'all will see my truth on Netflix in a couple months. Months. Put it back up. <laughs> the show will be called Jerome McCoy. The truth until then, be safe, y'all, and stop slandering my name. Also, a spinoff show to come in Singapore with other men who went through something similar. I'm out. Love, Sir Jerome David McClay. Sir... <laughs> They are not going to let you in Singapore. And why out of all the countries in the world and all the continents did you choose Singapore? Is, am I missing something? Did something happen in Singapore? I, I, don't, I don't get the reference. Is it the lady men? <laughs> Put that photo of them up again from the beginning. Where's the button at? Hold on. It was all a lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, he also shared a clip telling Teresa to stop slandering his good name and get her facts right. Look, if you don't know something about somebody you dating, ask. Stop trying to Google them or trying to find out stuff. Um, and if they tell you right now, you know, it ain't necessarily none of your business. Maybe you should just leave it alone. Everything ain't your business all the time about everybody. Every detail of their personal life when you first meet is not your business. It takes time and years to get to know somebody that way sometimes. Please allow the process to be the process and don't try to just dive in because what you can do is end up putting your foot in your mouth and looking real stupid at the end of the day for saying something, making a comment about something you don't even know. So, again, allow a relationship to progress. Allow a person to tell you in their own time. Don't go digging because you never know what you might find. And then, honestly, there's two sides to every story. So don't just sit there. Trying to Google people all the time because Google wrong most of the time. Come on, man. Talk to the person you with. Stop all that foolishness, man. Stop using those uh, earpieces. We have uh, cordless uh, <laughs> Apple Pro buds. And your your face is just too fat for that hat. Just take it off. And the gap tooth, it, you know, this is my thing. Like God only gives us so much to work with, right? And then we have to enhance the rest of it. And I used to date somebody that had a gap tooth like that. And when we get to argue and I'd be like, you do realize that like, I've accepted you for who you are. <laughs> so like, why compliment, why, why complicate my life with all the extraness? That, that hat looked like, what's the movie with a box of chocolates? Forrest, Forrest Gump. Gump. <laughs> Go look at Forrest Gump and see the hat that he was wearing when he was doing all of this funny shit, okay? You look weird, you sound weird. And now here we are talking about your weird ass and that weird ass gap you got. But then again, looking at you, don't you both deserve each other? <laughs> no matter what was real or not. Well, Jer well, before we even get into it, is my criticism too hard? Do I need to scale it back? Or am I just being honest? Speaking of back. <laughs> Charlamagne, why are you talking about this girl's back? Uh, is that in these notes? Are we talking about that here? No. Well. Charlamagne, Charlamagne addressed her, talking about she's the big back girl, and I ain't gonna lie. I know T.S. Madison got mad because she has a big back, and then they had words, and then now Jess Hilarious, who ain't hilarious, has something to say, but I gotta wait six days to respond to that. You know, either way, it's just too much, and it's all on the backs of these two. Jesus. 
By the way, who's laying on their back during this? Because uh. somebody got to pump or ride or something. This is just, it smells like a lot of cream of wheat and <laughs> okra, you know? <laughs> I always look at people like this who are having sex and wonder what, what the room smell like. Because it's giving real like lack of crest and- it smells um, like passion. And this, this right here, oh baby, I know what that smell like in the morning. Baccarat. <laughs> and when they were posting, it was back to back. Get it? Uh, get it? Back to back. <laughs> well, Jerome told. T- well, well, before I go on, what do you? Because I can I can go on for days. Because there's enough to come back to. <laughs> I can't believe he turned his back on her. Get and it. I can't believe they argued and she went back to him. <laughs> but either way, we're back at one. Oh, that's a song. Who is that song? Back at one. Brian. Is that um, Brian. Brian McKnight? Okay, anyway, mm-hmm. what do you guys think of this? I mean, back, big backs aside. By the way, I'm hungry. Do you want baby back ribs? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um. Okay, I did not watch the 50 parts. I could not sit there and charge my phone 10 million times to watch 18 hours of content. So God bless all the people who are like, I watched all 50 parts so you don't have to. Your critique of him is not bad because he did her so dirty. Yeah. Alleg- Alleged. Allegedly. Oh, right? God protect us. I mean, maybe the parents were dead, <laughs> right? Maybe they're, well, if they're dead, they're dead, right? But how did he do her dirty? Do we know? Yeah. He did do it. He was like, I'm this, I'm that. And then and it was all he alive. had a twin brother. And the twin was all that. But he was not shit. Is the twin cute or is the twin look? The twin like... is a twin. Wait, they look just like that? <laughs> yeah. No, There's three don't. big backs in this. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> wait, so it's back to back to back. <laughs> wait, do, wait, so do the twins look like each other exactly? Um. Because I think it's one thing if you have, twin. I think it's one thing if you have one ugly kid. Oh. Uh. No, 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 listen, listen. And I'm sorry, I'm not talking about kids. There's, I'm not talking about any specific child in what I'm about to say, right? Because some of you are out there and you have ugly children. I know you're looking at them and you you feel personally attacked. I'm not attacking you. You, you and your God and your mirrors have to deal with that. All I'm saying is that I've been in communities where I've seen two ugly twins. And I'm like, God got y'all back to back. God said, thou shall walk forward in fear. Of ridicule twice a day. You know, I mean, I don't know. They say God makes some mistakes, but I've seen a couple people. Um, okay, but what do you think? Listen, I, I, I'm on the same train as Marina. I didn't. I I just don't have the time or the capacity to watch fifty a fifty part series on TikTok. Mm-hmm. But I did get the clip notes. And to me, I'm sorry. There's scammers in the world. If we get married, I'm checking your credit. You taking a blood test? I'm gonna check your LinkedIn. Uh, I'm gonna have to meet somebody in your family or meet one of your friends in person. Like, come on now. Like, you didn't do anything and you married this man? Like, that's the that's thing. A little there crazy. was not just one red flag. It was two, three, four, 15 million red flags, and she's still no shade to her. I feel for her because I feel like a lot of women have been in that place, and that's they're all kind of relating to it. But come on, she got got. Jerome told TMZ that he's planning on taking legal action against Teresa to defend his reputation and his career. He claims that her allegations are hurting his public relations job at a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that your name is Jerome tell me you a liar already. Because everybody oh named God. Jerome lies, don't they? <laughs> don't they? Oh. That's yeah. the name of my church, St. Jerome. <laughs> and this is what they say when you walk in the doors at your church. Si se puede. <laughs> Can we put the picture of her and her kid up again? <laughs> now that's twins if I've ever seen them. Where have you been? Well, I can tell you by the looks of these photos. Oh, you know, I also don't like when people take photos with their mouths open like this <laughs> because I can, I'm like, all I think about is what does the breath smell like? <laughs> you know? Right? And you know there hasn't been a crest strip in that. <laughs> I think that's a screenshot, though. That's why it's even dirty. <laughs> All right, yeah, take a screenshot. But they did have a lot. They both take, like, photos or film from below. Under, yeah, yeah. that's not tripod. a good angle. 
No, listen. That. Even okay, when I was I'm not going to say the word, but when I was <laughs> that. <laughs> Wait. Am I digressing back to the old Jason? Because I've been yes. on this campaign for three yes. months. I'm sorry, people. I've been on this campaign for three months, and it is bottled up inside. I'm telling you. And look, I am who I am. God created me to be this way. I am not spilling tea. I am spilling truth, and I'm speaking truth to power. Okay? The power she needed to get... <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> Charlemagne this is blasphemy because the Bible speaks on things that are unforgivable sins and this coming together and this conjoined at the hip at any moment was wrong. Okay. And I'm just going to step out on faith and say that I hope there's no going back. And while this sparked a whole debate with Charlemagne talking about big back people, let me also say that Charlemagne big back lives matter. And there are people out there with big old strong backs who are actually taking care of business and providing for families. And um, when I had a big back, Charlemagne, I was, I wasn't in no shit like this though. I wasn't in no shit. Actually, I was dating somebody with a gap in their mouth. Oh, I wrote about that in chapter. Oh, that chapter. Oh my God, it was tight. Capricorn. All right, well anyway, I'm just gonna stop because I don't wanna get any, any, any calls from PETA about saying things or the ASPCA. <laughs> <laughs> did I do good? <laughs> you did great. <laughs> I tried, I tried. Ooh. Oh my God, six, get this off my, thank you, <laughs> Jesus. Six more days. I just need six, four, oh, four more days. It's six today. And then four by the time this airs, all right. I was seeing if Portia did any updates on her filing from divorce from Obido. Now you remember I called him Obido when we did gagging with Jason Lee. That was the name I named Simon a long time ago. And it and it fits because we don't even know if he's Simon anymore. Look at that. Mm. I know things because the Lord I serve talks directly to me. Mm. Y'all made me call him Simon because y'all stopped calling him Obido. His name is Simon. I said his name Obido. Why? Because y'all fell for the okie do, and so did she. And now she's falling for doors. Portia Williams from Real Housewives of Atlanta, who just got picked up for the next season. I'm looking at the shaky. I'm not you. She just got picked up for Real Housewives of a season, uh, for Real Housewives of uh, Atlanta for the new season, and now this might be her new storyline because she's filed for divorce after 15 months from married to Obido, AKA Simon Gubidiba, okay? Well, he's from Nigeria, I'll say allegedly. Allegedly. Because we don't know where he is from because we don't even know who he is, and neither does she. Or maybe this is for a storyline because we know Candy's not going back to the show. That was a good casting to let her go, but she, you know, she, cause she's already a boss. She already has her own shit. Candy got money. She don't need that. Well, days before this, news broke out that Simon was being denied U.S. citizenship due to his criminal past involving bank fraud, credit card fraud, identity fraud, and not, and more. You know, Rob, the problem I got with this is it's the audacity of them saying that a Nigerian is being a criminal and a scam. Why are you laughing? Because y'all know y'all be scamming. Well, either way, timeline of events, Portia and Simon tied the knot in November 2022. They had two weddings. Remember, one was so huge. One was in America. The other one was over in Nigeria. Allegedly. <laughs> Here's a photo of the Gubidubas America wedding. Take a look. They dressed up. He was some uh, fake chief of police and she was the <laughs> black Cinderella. Yes. And then Spinderella went over there to Africa. <laughs> and this is what it looked like over there. She was coming to America and he was robbing America. <laughs> Allegedly. Very beautiful, but 
before Portia met and married Simon, remember he was with Fallon, who just got separated with her baby daddy who wants to come on my show to talk about what they did together, didn't do together. Well, either way, she was happy that she took Fallon. She took Obido from Fallon, but didn't know she was taking in a Fallon. <laughs> Court documents show that he had been trying to become an American citizen since the first visit in 1982 when I was only five years old. Here I am in kindergarten playing with crayons and Play-Doh. And here he was trying to get in the country. Well, either way, in 1985, his first application was denied and he left America. He came to America and then he went right back after overstaying his six-month visitor visa. Like my friend Obi from Canada. Hey, Obi. <laughs> well, he came back in June of 1986 and then again overstayed his visa. In September 1987, Simon was arrested for bank and credit card fraud and pleaded guilty to the felonies. And he was again arrested in 1989, in January of 18, 1989, for unauthorized use of a vehicle. Arrested again in May 1990 for another felony fraud. And again in April of 1991, a judge then ordered Simon to be deported which he was in March of 1992. But before that deportation, Simon was accused of using a different identity. <laughs> I'm an entertainer. To seek citizenship under the Social Agriculture Worker Program. I didn't even know that existed. You, you, a, you, a, you a governmental scam? Put the picture of him dressed up like a captain of police. What country Naval Academy bullshit is this? Beautiful, though. But anyway, go back. Well, in July of 1991, he received temporary citizenship. Then April 1992, it was made permanent. Then in December 2016, Simon allegedly applied for naturalization under second identity. But that was denied to his temporary resident status being unlawfully granted. Then in December 2020, Simon applied and was denied for citizenship again. Then October 2022, Simon appealed the denial but was rejected. And again in November 2022, the same month he married Portia. Is she in on it? What are y'all doing in Atlanta? We mm. knew the Africans be down there with the cars and the furs and all the show. <laughs> March of 2023, Simon filed yet another complaint, but it was in January 2024 that a judge dismissed and closed his case. Now, a month later, Portia then filed for divorce. Shocking fans and filling up her storyline lines. Because <laughs> in the filing, she's now saying that her soon-to-be ex-husband Better not destroy or conceal or alter any documents or evidence related to their financial records before he'll face sanctions because she wants the money. Why? 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 She want to get paid. Hmm. But you know the rule, Rob, right? No, what's the rule? Once you get laid, you got to get paid. Uh <laughs> Period. So, Portia broke her silence on social media. She posted this on her Instagram story. Thank you for your prayers. Nobody's praying for you, Portia. I love you. You know that. But nobody's praying for you. What do you think of this mess? Up from the beginning, look, look, I've been annoyed at this relationship since she took her friend's husband, boyfriend, Allegedly. whatever he was, and then got married to him. And then you find out you married a scammer. I just feel like it was kind of full circle. It was just... You, you get what you get when you put yourself in that situation. But just like Risa Tisa, there's so many red flags that she can pinpoint and see that he was giving scams. So I don't know why this is going down. Now, I'm having fun with this at your expense, Portia, but you know I love you. I actually really love Portia. You're a beautiful woman. We are friendly. We're not friends, but we are friendly, and I do like you a lot. And I, oh, I would love to spill the tea with you on this because I just need the details. Like... <laughs> What were the? I know the sheets were expensive. I know, like, how much money did he steal? <laughs> and did you ever know about it? But because I saw last time I saw you guys in Atlanta at Nini's uh, hookah, hookah lounge, you had diamonds and you were, mm. you, you look rich, but y'all was wearing other people's money. That's crazy. Mm. Well, 
Obido's in trouble and Portia's going to get the money. Now, Portia's going to go back to the show and she's going to be single and Kenya's going to drag her for filth and talk about her because you said that she paid for her man or she, you said, now I don't know what's going on. Were you trying to help him get his papers? Or how deep does this go? And are there no good Nigerians left now? Like Atlanta's pool, African pool is shrinking because every time I turn around, it's like everybody got African and they all driving these cars, but then come to find out, Obi don't and stole uh, Allegedly. It was all a lie. It's above me now. <laughs> uh, scamming. Stop misrepresenting Nigeria because this perpetuates the joke that I said earlier as a joke as a real narrative about N Nigerians. Every time I hear somebody Nigerian, even the one that told me he wanted to invest in my business and took out some paper, or did some abracadabra in a hotel room and tried to turn it into counterfeit, tell me, here, go put this in your bank. Are you crazy? <laughs> yes, that happened. No, it was probably your cousin. <laughs> what is the reason, bitch? Why? You know, I think they need to do this show, Real Housewives of Atlanta, bring NeNe Leakes back, have her, have Kenya, bring Phaedra, put Kim Zolciak in there, and lock him in a room for 72 hours <laughs> with one box of makeup and just a bunch of liquor and turn the cameras on, and it would be a show. What, what y'all think? Is it, just, is, this, is it just messy, or do you think it's just going to be a storyline? I was going to say it's going to be a storyline. I mean, it better be a storyline at this point. But when the police are involved, is it really story though? Well, I mean, I, I don't think it was meant to be a storyline, you know, but it better be a part of it. Like, <laughs> Simon's now unbothered by the whole citizenship headlines, and this is what he had to say. <laughs> he looked like he's still getting money. We yes. don't know whose it is, but... I'm so glad I'm single. This is the time that I'd be like, I dread the idea of getting into a relationship and then it falling out online. Like I never want to have a falling out on social media. I tell you right now, Listen. if me and my partner get into it and it starts to get heated, you know what I'm gonna say? Okay, you're right. Not a problem. Goodbye. That's it. <laughs> I don't want no smoke. Cause that right there, it, you know, I don't think your breakup should be for entertainment. But either way, we're going to watch it all play out on the next season of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Mm. Meanwhile, Andy Cohen, they say you was inviting Brandy Glanville over to the house to have sex with you and one of the other. Oh, you didn't get into that? You better go. You ain't better get on your Googler. Andy Cohen's under fire because they said that he. Allegedly. Was trying to force female castmates into watching him have sex with other people from other casts and Andy said he apologized if you misunderstood whatever it was and he's sorry for his behavior because I've seen you out at the clubs Andy and I'm sorry I've never been on Watch What Happens Live so I'm gonna just tell you what I saw happen live. You are a nasty filthy drunk when them boys walk around and baby 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 you had you had one of my friends I'm trying to hang with Kelly Ripper. I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> Bye, Obado. All right. Wendy Williams. Where is Wendy Williams? I have not seen this documentary yet. Have you guys seen it? Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? I've seen the majority of clips. Did you see all the whole thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Rob has seen it. She's seen clips. I've seen none of it. I've seen a clip or two. And I'm personally not watching it because I don't want to see it. And I'm just mad as hell that it's even out there. Okay, I know Wendy Williams personally. You know that this is a friend of mine. This is somebody that I hold in high regard. I love Wendy. And you know what? Like my mother, she has lots of issues. And, you know, when people were saying, oh, Wendy's on cocaine, she was never on cocaine, but she did have battles with alcohol. And I have to say that watching the, sh the clips that I've seen so far, and because I know Wendy and I've been in her private space, which I'm going to respect and protect. I know that she had her own challenges, okay? And as a friend, I did my best to help her through those challenges. And it wasn't until I was around and started seeing them myself that I had to be more aware of how I participate in her life so I didn't enable her. Well, before her new lifetime, 
documentary Where's Wendy Williams, we all were wondering what happened with Wendy because we haven't seen her. And I had her phone number. I have her phone number, but it just goes to voicemail. And I've been calling her for I don't even know how long it's been now. It's been a long time because you remember we used to call. She used to call me all the time. I used to call her. Well, I haven't talked to Wendy in a long time. But we knew that she was facing health issues for a long time, like Graves' disease and lymphedema, hyperthyroidism and alcoholism, which many didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. And those of us who were close to her did know. Well, ultimately, um, that all of that ended up playing a part in her ending the 13-year syndicated talk show, The Wendy Williams Show, that you know I was on several times and that she talked about me on several times. The show ended two years ago, just to put in context. Remember, they erased her social media. They took everything off of YouTube, and they literally just eliminated her as if she didn't uh, exist. And they even took control of her bank at Wells Fargo, which, by the way, we left Wells Fargo, the shittiest bank in the world, uh, because I just don't trust them, and they're not really good for black businesses. Uh, either way, you know, the show ended in February 2022. Now, in June of 2023, Wendy's son, Kevin Hunter Jr., said that she'd been suffering from multiple health issues, and he believed that they were a result of alcohol abuse over the years. Now, there were headlines that Wendy was being hospitalized for mental health. Remember, they said she was there, and I told you about the bank thing that she talked about, where they freezed all her assets. And I was at dinner once when I took her to dinner, and, you know, we kind of joked, but she was like, you paying for it. Because they took my money. But the sad part about that joke was that it was a real thing. And somebody who had made millions and millions of dollars. And when he was making like 20-something million or something crazy, froze her account, kept all her money in the money that she earned in an account that came from a business that she started but didn't own. And they said that she was in incapacitated. Now, Wendy had denied the claims. And slammed the bank. And remember, she was doing all the videos. Well, she was doing the videos with the guy who was her jeweler, who became her manager after she kicked Bernie out. Bernie was her manager who used to manage Rose, uh, Rosie O'Donnell and other talk show hosts that were very successful in space. She brought him on to manage her after her husband, Kevin, left because she wanted to take it to the next level. And her and Bernie were doing that. Well, somebody told her Bernie was taking her money, allegedly. Allegedly. That's what he's working on, right? And she fired Bernie. That then gave this guy who was helping her with her podcast, the, 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 the jeweler, full control of her career. A jeweler don't know nothing about building no talk show. But either way, Wendy denied the claims uh, that she was incapacitated. And she even slammed the bank and then went on a whole firing spree. She fired everybody around her. Or were they fired by somebody next to her? Uh, and she said that she was coming back and better uh, with a podcast that we never saw coming to life. Now, I will never forget that one of the last conversations that me and Wendy had was she called me to tell me that she got married. And then I are you, are you sure I ran that as a story? And then her pers person who was the jeweler put out a statement that it wasn't true. Then I called Wendy and I recorded it and then put out the audio so you can hear for herself say it. But it was one thing that she said in that conversation that I'll never forget. She told me about the Guardian person, and she said they told her, and I quote, do not trust Jason. Now, this is somebody I built a close relationship with, whose house I was over all the time, who I talked to every other day, who I held up, who she held up. She literally, in my opinion, was passing the torch to me in many ways. Because it wasn't just when I came on her show. It was how she talked about me in the show all the time. How she promoted my book. How she supported me. How we, we threw a dinner for her when she got her star in Hollywood and took her son to the strip club for the... Like, I built a relationship with this woman. This woman that we're talking about as a person, but this is my friend, right? But when she disappeared and never came back, and even when I would be with her and she would talk about things and I see that she would be forgetting stuff, I thought early stage dementia but you know you also i forget things too so you know you know you don't want to overthink about it no pun intended but then she just disappeared now this is when it got really crazy for me this woman loves two people more than her show because wendy only really loved a few things she loved her son kevin for sure she loved her niece alex finney for sure who's an anchor in Miami, and she loved her show. That's it. Mm -hmm. That is all she loved. She never, she never talked about her dad or her family or something, because, you know, her brother would be doing things. I think his name is Tommy. 
her brother, would, I think his name is Tommy, I don't know, but he would be on podcasts doing crazy stuff. And then, you know, she would fall out with this and that. And then her mother, you know, passed away. She loved her mom. And I believe she loved her dad too. But, you know, outside her mom, her dad, her brother, and her niece, she never, and her nephew, she never talked about none of these people. None of them. So when she just disappeared and all of a sudden all these people are speaking for her and they're keeping her away from her son and her niece, that's why I knew it was some funny shit. And telling her, don't talk to Jason. You know, you, should, you don't talk to anybody who's out there advocating for you. Because most of you Wendy Williams fans, you find my social media and you say, please, Jason, go find Wendy, talk and help Wendy. I don't know what to do. Because when I talk to her son and Kevin says, I don't know where my mom is, I know there's a problem. When I say, give me her number and he says, we don't know how to reach her, there's a problem. So you took her money, you took her show, and then you don't give her access to her son or her niece, who I know she loves. You put her with a guardian that nobody knows, and we don't know where she's at. But then why were you guys filming her all this time, too? Because somebody around her was looking for a bag. So Wendy's incapacitated, allegedly. She don't know what's going on. You tell her what's going on or what to do. She just does it or doesn't know she's doing it, but she knows cameras are there, but... The Wendy that I know is a private person. She don't let cameras all in her house like that. So she had to know the cameras were there. But what was she told? Why the cameras were there? I don't know. It just is all shady to me. Wendy Williams has to get on TV and tell me why she did that for me to believe at this point. Well, after she just appear, uh, disappeared with her last social media post going up all the way back in July of 2023, six months later now, Wendy's niece, Alex, who I tell you I know, says she's still missing, claiming that her legal guardian has blocked the family from seeing her. I talked to... Uh, uh, Alex the other day and I text with Lil Kev the other day when I was in Miami but we didn't get a chance to see each other because he was supposed to come to Swan and he didn't come but I will tell you what they told me Kevin told me that he's afraid to talk because they've threatened him how you threaten her son to ask about where his mom is or to advocate for her. You know, the last conversation I had with Kevin, I really felt like the next thing I'm going to hear is Wendy William died. And I'm and I'm not even saying I'm not going to hear that next because I at this point, that's what I feel is happening. I personally feel they're doing to her what they did to Britney Spears. Now, maybe what they did to Britney Spears, Britney needed because we see her twirl one more time. I'm calling the people. And maybe Wendy did need an intervention, but to take her away from her son, you took her away from her entire family instead of letting her family become the guardian. And now come to find out the woman who did the guardianship used to take bribes or payments from people allegedly. Allegedly. On donors. She was the guard. She was doing messy, uh, weird stuff with people who were donating to her. Well, either way, Wendy now has resurfaced with this new documentary. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't need to see it. I'm going to watch it to just try to fill in all the blanks for me. And I'm going to ask Rob what he thinks and Marina the, what she's talking about. But it's sad because this is an icon who we all love, whether you hate or love her job. We, we don't nobody do it like her and we miss her. Well, now this new documentary has spawned mixed reviews and people feel all types of way. And it's aired against the family's wishes and despite her new diagnosis, which they revealed. She didn't even tell us that she had uh, uh, dementia. Her guardian did or her whatever. This is the photo from the doc, just a collage of different moments. I know Wendy Williams, sorry. She don't want y'all to see her looking like that. Wendy, when she went on her show, would never even want you to see her without her wig. So I know that Wendy was not in her right mind letting you come in her home and film her like that. When you film a show like that, you will have a scene with your niece and all your niece may know is that scene. They don't know everything else. Who signed off on the release of this? Well, Wendy signed a three-part deal with Lifetime and she did the two parts and this is the third part. So technically she owed them something and so they just delivered something probably without her even consenting. Do we know? No, because we don't know where Wendy at. This should be illegal. Now, days before the documentary premiered, the Today Show reported that Wendy was diagnosed with front tem frontotemporal dementia and asphyxia, both affect one's ability to speak, comprehend, write, etc. Sabrina Morrissey, who claims to be Wendy's temporary guardian, also filed a lawsuit to stop the doc from airing, but to, to no avail. Let me call Sabrina real quick.
I've never called her. Where's Wendy? Her phone right now is saying Jason Lee, Jason Lee, and she's like, mm-mm. The Google Fi wireless subscriber. You Google Fi. Please leave a message. Not a Google Fi. Sabrina, I'll be calling you back. Cause I'm on your ass. Well, either way, the doc producers then claimed if we'd known that she had dementia, no one would have rolled a camera. Really? Let me tell you, when you see Wendy go live from New York, they she is so put together with a team around her and they put her out there and she walks over to her chair and she sits there and she does her thing and she reads this camera and you know she gets a lot of it wrong and she'll say, huh, Norman, and Norman will fill in the blanks. That We all saw that there was something there. But there is also a part of this show that I don't know everything and I learn it in the show, but you know, clearly I have notes in front of me and a, this thing helping me here and a researcher, whatever. Well, after her diagnosis went public, people reported that Wendy gave them a statement. Hmm. Allegedly. This was the statement. In a statement exclusively obtained by people on Friday, Williams, 59, thanked fans for their overwhelming support. Now, I'm going to just tell you this. I'm going to let you read this. Wendy Williams don't talk like this. I, I just want to say I have an immense gratitude for the love and kind words I have received after sharing my diagnosis of asphyxia and frontotemporal dementia. She said, let me say, wow, your response has been overwhelming. The mess Wendy, don't talk like that. In fact, Wendy would have said to her fans something about how much she missed them. A lot more detail about that. So that's not even Wendy. I don't know. Uh, maybe they wrote something for her and say, hey, what do you think? And she said, yeah, whatever. This is how Wendy would talk. Yeah, whatever. Because when I would say people would be talking about Wendy, I would call Wendy and say, Wendy, did you see what they said about you? She would say, child, I don't care what nobody says about me. Don't call me about that. And me and Wendy set a rule to never talk about the gossip. We never talked about gossip because she never cared. She didn't care what celebrity was doing. Anything. The only thing she would say to me is, don't forget to introduce me to Madonna. That's it. And I would say, don't forget to introduce me to Kelly Ripa. Because we both agreed to exchange white friends. I'll give you Madonna, you give me Kelly Ripa. <laughs> that was what, I'm just saying, that's what, were you ever around when we had those yeah. conversations? Mm -hmm. You you introduced me to, and every time I could pull up, I pull up to dinner, she'd be like, is Madonna coming? No, Wendy. Is Kelly coming? No, Jason. Okay, well, we're your white friend, I'm going to give you my white friend. You know? But but I know the Wendy, I know Wendy, that ain't Wendy. Oh, let's stop there for a minute. Just you saw the documentary. What do you think? The documentary, in my opinion, was really, really good for Wendy and her family because one, it it was hard to see Wendy like that, um, and to know that they just continued to roll the cameras. But at the end of the day, I think it really gave the family a platform to say, "This is what's happening to us." They've stripped us of our ability to communicate with her, her sister, her niece, her son. They were all very, very active and a part of the documentary. Um, and you can see that they were really concerned about her well-being. And like previously, when she was under the care of her son, her health was getting better. And then when they stripped that- Don't forget, he also kidnapped her to take her back to the family and they threatened to put him in jail. Exactly. And you, it's the moment they took her back to New York and Wendy talks about it in the documentary, she felt alone. She felt isolated. She didn't have anyone. She started drinking. And- they wouldn't allow her to be with her family. And it's crazy to me that a bank would stop. Well, it's understandable because they wanted access to her money and they wanted to control her and continue to make money off of her. But they stopped her family from intervening and in helping her to physically and mentally get better. She lost so much weight. She was in mental decline. It, it's sad to watch it, but it, it also hurts to watch her family like begging to have access to this woman who they actually love. So the documentary, I think, in a way, allow people to see what this family is dealing with and see the hurt that's happening to Wendy where outside source like outside influences are just just trying to make money off of her but is there anybody fighting to find Wendy they all know where so the jeweler manager knows where she is she's in a facility but they won't give the family access to her she does call from time to time they let her she call called, her right. sister 
So she'll call her sister and talk to her sister. And her sister says in the documentary, you can tell she's getting better. But I, I did hear, she, Alex did say she sounds a lot better than she ever has. She did say she asked about me. She did say she was going to give her my phone number to call me. And I'm waiting for Wendy to call. And when she calls, I'm going to record it Good. and ask her if I can share it. Because I want to hear, and I want Wendy's words to be said. Because I at this point, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Let me say on record right now, if ever any of you in the room ever hear and you watching, somebody says Jason is unavailable and can't find him, do everything you can to call the National Guard, the Bloods, the Crips, call the city council members, the mayor, the president, call Erica Lowe, call everybody we know <laughs> to come get me. Yeah, Because this is, this is kind of scary mm -hmm. to think that like the bank could take your money, then somebody just, a judge could just put you in a facility and tell all your loved ones and everybody you can't come around? That's crazy. Yep. So I, I'm going to try to get to the bottom of it. I know a lot of you are pressuring me like, Jason, Jason, do something. I don't know what to do. If the family don't know what to do, I don't either. Meanwhile, anyway, LaShawn Thomas, a former legal rep for Wendy, shared her concern, claiming Wendy has clearly changed since Kevin Jr. was removed as her caregiver, which goes back to what Rob just said. Now, here's a video of what she said. And, um, I like the company I keep there, and I, you know, I do what I can, you know, I do what I can. Yeah, I see, I see you looking real healthy now. Please, Kevin, yeah. please. Yeah, but you also like how it's really private, because I know you like the gyms if they're private, of course. Yeah, I, I like it, and I also like food, which yeah. is why I've got to keep on my routines with going to the gym, you know? Yeah, and like, how, how have you been eating, like? Because everyone looks at you, you have beautiful skin, and people want to know what's, what's the secret. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving you points for saying that to me. You know that, don't you? Yeah, I'm trying. No, but you know, it's. Um, I was born. See, now that's the Wendy I know. And that's the Wendy that I hung out with. And that's the Wendy I went to dinner with. And that's the Wendy I took to the Cardi B party with. Let me put this photo of me and Wendy up here the last time we hung out. Take a look. Now, this is the Wendy that I know, healthy, beautiful, vibrant, had a great time. Now, she did get her hands on some liquor that night, and it was a lot. And that was after that, we had to have a conversation, like I'm sure her family has had privately, that I'm not going to share with you what that conversation was. But that's what friends and family do. And her family knows how much I love her, and, and I know how much, and I know they know, and I know how much she loves me from them, and I know how much she loves her son and her niece. So for, for them to not know... And Alex and them, what I will say, they're being very careful how they're not attacking because they don't want to lose the only contact they do have. And and I just want to find out who's responsible. And somebody should go to jail. I feel like somebody over here has done something. But either way, uh, Wendy, send you our love. Hope to see you soon. And, uh, yeah. All right. Oh, God. I don't want no revolt over this. I've already left the network. Diddy's in trouble. Now, Diddy is on his way down. And it's sad to watch, but maybe it's not, depending on what side of the street you stand on. Diddy is a, soul, is a cultural icon. He is the De Leon Diddy. He is the Ciroc of all circuses. This is the master with the plan. Well, that plan is in trouble because Diddy they're saying was trying to touch some boy's anus. Allegedly. Now, I don't know why Jamal from Hollywood Unlocked put anus in the caption, but he did. So now that sparked all this attention. Diddy's now being sued by an ex-male employee because they're saying that he allegedly sexually assaulted this person. And, and after settling this whole Cassie thing that cost him about $30 million, allegedly, allegedly. for rape and abuse, and all of the things she outlined in that document that we read here on the show, Diddy has been hit with three more lawsuits from three more women, including a Jane Doe who accused Diddy of sex trafficking and gang raping her at 17. Tessa, Teresa, whatever your name is. Teresa, Risa, Jesus. <laughs> now, a fourth person has come forward with a sexual assault against the, the mogul, and it's his former employee producer, Rodney Jones, a.k.a. Lil Rod. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I mean, that's a right. Lil Rod. Because we're talking about Lil Rod, you know. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a jacked handle. <laughs> 
Well, he alleged that the, that Brother Love sexually harassed and assaulted him during the creation of the Love album. So Lil Rod got touched during the Love album. All bad. Here's a photo of Lil Rod. I'm only reacting to the glasses, I promise. Lil Rod alleged that Diddy groped his genitals, touched his anus, and walked around him naked. And he also alleges that Diddy forced him to watch a sex tape allegedly involving love and hip-hop Atlanta star Stevie J with another. Allegedly. Man. However, Stevie's saying that that didn't happen. He's trying to keep the faith. You know, he's married to Faith Evans. Mm -hmm. But we saw Stevie J in a sex tape with Eve back in the day. So we know he does make st sex tapes. Well, Stevie J's denied the claim, while known gay adult star Knockout said, not Knockout who just reached out to me yesterday. Saying what? That's why you messaged me, Knockout? I'll be returning that call. Here's a photo of Stevie calling the lawsuit bogus. Take a look. And here is a Knockout saying it's him. Okay, it makes sense now. Okay, so Knockout reached out to me and I saw his messages said, and I quote, tell him to stop lying on my name. I didn't know, you know, I'm I'm running for city council. I'm not responding to, to sex workers and I love your <laughs> sex work and all of what you do. I, I'm a grown man who enjoys watching art and, and, and Knockout is a phenomenal artist. But knock it off. <laughs> Stop. Get out my DM with that shit. That's what it was. So he wanted me to clear his name up because he, oh, okay. Knockout, I'm sorry I didn't respond. I'm running for city office. Y'all scare me. Anytime I get messages, <laughs> I don't respond. They already said I was with the crib. I don't need to be with you. You know what I mean? Well, either way, Lil Rod also named City Girls rapper Young Miami and alleged that her cousin attempted to sexually assault him in front of Diddy and his dad. Let me see the photo of all of them. Wait a minute. So now this makes sense. Because I asked young Miami to host Carisha in the councilman with me for Stockton, and she just disappeared. Is that because we were posting this on Hollywood Unlocked? It makes, it's all making sense now. Well, Cuba Gooding Jr., who also got accused of sexual stuff and got found. Didn't he get in trouble? Cuba now is accused of touching, groping, and finally Mr. Jones. His legs, upper legs, upper inner thighs, near his groin, his lower back, his butt, and shoulders. Here's a photo with Lil Rod and Cuba Gooding Jr. Oh, my God. I mean... It was the love album, maybe. Anyway, boy, don't, why you do that? Don't punch it in. Go back. I thought that was that Ruben Stutter. Put, go back. <laughs> no, Ruben Stutter. Okay. Well, Diddy's son Justin Combs was also mentioned. Not Justin. Justin caught a Justin caught a stray too, with Little Rod alleging that Diddy directed his son and other colleagues to seek sex workers and specifically tasked Justin with locating. Allegedly. Underage girls to attend parties. Meanwhile, a Philadelphia rapper and two R&B superstars are also being named of have uh, named and accused of having sex with Diddy and or underage girls. Let me see photo of lawsuit number one. This person is saying that Lil Rod is nothing more than a liar who filed a thirty million dollar lawsuit, shamelessly looking for an under undeserved payday. His reckless name dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. And she went on and on and on to say that they have overwhelming proof that it's all BS. All right, the next next uh, screenshot. TMZ, uh, Stevie J tells TMZ that the allegations are false. And then uh, a little after that, 
Justin Combs tells TMZ, Justin Combs court, uh, categorically denies these absurd allegations. They are all lies. Wait, hold on. It was all a lie. And uh, this is a clear example of a desperate person taking desperate measures in hopes of a payday. Now, all of that's happening, and now here comes the receipts. Old posts of Lil Rod have surfaced as his lawsuits is now making headlines. Two weeks before, Lil Rod launched a GoFundMe seeking financial help to sue Diddy for allegedly stealing his publishing. Now, let me show you the GoFundMe account. And this is why I don't support GoFundMes. Then two days later, he went on Instagram and continued to call out the mogul, and here's a video of that. Some of you may know me or may not. I'm a music producer who's a writer and musician, um, different genres. I started in the gospel and jazz and, and R&B and worked my way over to the hip hop side. I've been working on an album. Um, I took a year off straight working on this album. That album is the Love Album, Off the Grid by Diddy. Um, and it's Grammy nominated right now as we speak. Um, I should be um, celebrating, but the truth is I'm not. Taking this album on has required so much time, um, you know, months and at, at a time, 16 hours to 24 hours a day. Um, sometimes, you know, Diddy would request certain works to be done and tell us don't go to sleep until it's done. And, and the truth is we'll be up for days trying to accomplish that. I've tried to get my business straight with them on this album, but the truth is they're not playing fair. They they hit me on below the belt on so many situations, just 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 dealing with this. It's the contract that they give me and the offer that they gave me was just disgusting. The the the, the producer fee pennies. And on top of that, these guys are trying to steal my publishing. I can't go for that. So I'm fighting back. He's a fighter, um, but I'm 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 gonna put in this fight. I gotta do it for myself, my rights, and most importantly, my kids. Taking my publishing or stealing it is is just it's I'm not gonna let that happen. I'm not gonna let that happen. Again, this is one of those projects that, that took so much time from me. I missed holidays uh with my family, just out working on this album. At what point I was running around with the, the hard drives the computer, just to run the ball on this album, to finish the production on it, make sure that this album came to, you know, a good project with good vibes, you know, just where it is right now. Um, and just to be offered little to no participation in this is highly disrespectful. I won't be that guy 20, 30 years from now, looking back saying, I wish I'd done this. I want to do this now. Um, doing this situation is not easy. Taking Puff to court, suing him is not easy. I don't have the 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 monies that it's going to take to fight him in court. So I'm just asking, you know, if you if you're in support, please. The link is in my bio to my GoFundMe. Um, the the money we go will go towards my attorney fees. And to just make sure I'm keeping my head above water during the process. I really appreciate this. Listen, at the end of the day, I think it, this might be cap. Because at this point, you can say whatever you want about Diddy and people are going to believe it because of the Cassie lawsuit. But we know 50 Cent's going to have a field day with this. Diddy laughed it off. Look. Hey, because I run Good shit. Yeah, nigga. So so I, said, I run shit. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Little Rod ain't worth giving this kingdom to if we don't control his publishing. I can solve his efforts with three other human beings. He's eating at our table, and I like his backstory, but you need to have other people. We, it's hard to work with him unless we have his pub. He's a piece of shit human, but we do not need his talent unless we can work with him. So what do you think? I think there's probably a lot more skeletons that are going to pop out the closet. I, it's difficult, though, because you are in a situation where now there are probably going to be some fakes that pop up and try and get clout or try and make a, a quick check. But at the end of the day, a, a lot of it seems to be substantiated, especially with the lawsuit being dealt out so quickly. And I think we I said this before. I, I, I thought personally there was going to be more guys that started to come out, but... Listen. Let me let me be as clear of the air. Diddy never touched me. 
Okay, so <laughs> I know because I had to deal with revolt. And people think, oh, you all in that. Me and Diddy never hung like that. I respect Diddy as a creative. I respect him as a cultural icon. I respect his contribution to music, fashion, culture, uh, education with kids, all that. Branding, I mean, he's an amazing marketing person. We were never friends like that. I was never a part of the inside. None of these celebrities outside my friends invite me in though that are involved in anything that could be talked about like this. They don't let me get too close to it because once I smell it, <laughs> You know, now they know I know. And uh, yeah, but I, I don't, I didn't have that relationship with them, so I don't know. All I know is Cat Williams told us that 2024 is going to be the year of the truth. And I just feel like all these things have been bubbling and brewing. But do we think that there's going to be another Carisha, please, is the question ever. I don't know. Are people really asking that question? Because right now, they are? No, I haven't heard that. I mean, Revolt is no. still a network. It's still going to function. He stepped down a long time ago. I think the network is going to continue to thrive. And let's be clear, Black-owned networks and Black-owned pa platforms should still continue to thrive. He's done the responsible thing of stepping away because the brand was mm -hmm. hemorrhaging. He settled his lawsuit with uh, Ciroc where he was making $50 million a year. They took all the money, uh, stopped it all from coming, and now he's settled. So he got his one lump sum payout. Uh, his album was up for a Grammy. It didn't win. Uh, and he stepped down from his school. Uh, uh, Sean John clothing line is now no longer being manufactured. Macy's is shutting down over 150 stores, by the way. And so, yeah, I mean, like, is Diddy done is the question. It's not about Carisha. Is Diddy done? I don't know that Diddy's done. Because Kanye done popped back up with some slippers and y'all are buying them. So, you know, I never really know who's done anymore. But I, it's just unfortunate to see. I will say with cancel culture nowadays, this is what happens. Somebody makes an allegation, everybody start bandwagoning it, and then boom. But some people will say that if you rub some wood together too fast and see some smoke, where there's smoke, there's a fire. Didn't touch me. All right. Well, Lil Rod, I'm glad that you're, you know. Okay. Good luck to all. That's it. All right, let's just get straight to the, I am going to get out of here. Go straight to the thoughts and prayers. Two thousand twenty four continues to prove itself to be the year of great reckoning with all things done in the dark, coming to the light and all lies being exposed to reveal the truth. How Risa Tisa did her ex-husband. And how she had us all glued to our phones as she did it. But Risa isn't the only Atlanta woman dumping her alleged felon husband. Portia Williams is right behind her with Obido. Fans are just shocked, curious, and sad all the same damn time. But they'll be able to watch the next season of Real Housewives of Atlanta. And it looks like Portia and Simon won't be sharing the future anymore because of his apparent criminal past. Now, who saw that coming? What we really didn't see coming was Cam Newton out there acting like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, one of the most physically dominating quarterbacks the league has ever seen, dragging men for filth, literally. Now, currently, Cam isn't facing any cases over the brawl, but the same can't be said for Diddy, who's been hit with another lawsuit. Take that, take that, take that. You know, Cassie opened up the floodgate for everyone else, alleging abuse against the mogul. Now, we thought her suit was explosive, but the latest one from an ex male employee is shining a light on some of your favorite stars. Well, regardless, we'll be following along as the case goes to trial, gets settled out of court, or just gets dismissed because justice will be keeping an eye out for Wendy Williams. Now, for months on months, we've all been wondering where the hell is Wendy Williams? Since she's resurfaced in a new Lifetime expose called Where is Wendy Williams? We're still left wondering, where the hell is Wendy? Now, her own family claims they have zero access to her, leaving us fans even more concerned than we were before the docuseries aired. And with this new diagnosis being revealed, our hearts continue to break because Wendy is beloved by many, including me, this show, my staff, and heralded as the queen of all media. And we just pray that she's safe and that she has a safe return to all of us in good health and happiness. Well, that's it for this show. I am going to be logging out as the city councilman. Soon to be elected. Can you believe it? Four days. Four days. Listen, I'm telling you now, when you see me, you have to address me as Councilman Lee. 
Does that apply here at Hollywood Unlocked too? Like, yes. am I a councilman here too? Yes. Really? Yeah, you're a councilman everywhere. But but isn't it weird when you're at work? No. At the Jason Lee show and the Jason Lee podcast, <laughs> Councilman Lee. Okay, so are we making it a staff rule? It's a requirement that you refer to me as Councilman Lee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> serving up my duties. <laughs> Rob, are you ready for that? Uh, Wait, sure. so do you have to call me Councilman Lee at the Abbey too? I guess so. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I can be on the big side. No. No. Uh, yes, yes, no. All right, y'all. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Jason Lee Podcast. Make sure you tune into everything we do. And follow my page, my um, social media page for the city council uh, position. It's District 6 on Instagram. Uh, that is my new thing. I haven't been posting over there yet because I'm waiting till I get elected. And then when I do, I'm going to be posting all the time. All right, y'all. Uh, make sure if you're out there watching, whether you're in Stockton or anywhere else in the United States, that you're getting registered to vote. Register to vote. And you can go right here to get registered. Um, and you may not be able to do it online for this election. But if you're in Stockton and you want to vote, go down to the register office right on down there on San Joaquin Street and make sure you go to the third floor and register to vote and cast your ballot on March 5th. Regardless of who you're voting for, although I want it to be me, I want to make sure that more of us are voting. And I'm happy to say that in San Joaquin County, more than 6,000 new voters have been registered to vote since October. And I want to say I'm so, so happy that a lot of them are first time voters or people who are people of color. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's how you start changing the world around you. So please get out there and vote. Thank you so much. By the next time I log in, you might have to do this to your TV screen. Bye. The Jason Lee Podcast.